Hi, everybody. Welcome to this edition of NAP News Now. My name is Alisa Tag. I'm so super excited to be with you today and introduce you to uh, Haley Mosley, who is also a fellow activity professional. We're super excited to have Haley with us today. Haley is going to be sharing a little bit more with us about what's going on in her life, which which affects all of us as activity professionals. So I'm super excited to introduce you to Haley Mosley. Haley, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much for being willing to share what's happening. And what we'll do is we'll start just a little bit first and have you share with everybody a little bit more about your background, where you are in the United States, and, and then we'll go from there. All right. Well, thank you so much, Elisa, for letting me have this opportunity to talk to everybody and let everybody know what I am working on right now and how you can help, because I sure need your help. So, as you said, I'm Haley Mosley. I'm from Dallas, so howdy from Texas. <laughs> I've been a activity professional for over 20 years, and just like you, Elisa, I'm also a second generation activity professional. Love that. I love yeah. that, Haley. That's beautiful. Yes. My mother uh, was an activity director, so eight years old, I'm sitting on the piano singing at New Year's, you know, I've done it my <laughs> whole life, so. Uh, but so I am a uh, so let's see. So I've been an activity professional. I'm currently at CC Young. I'm actually the director of campus education. I've been here at CC Young for about eight years and then transitioned to this position in February. And it's been a really good move because uh, I kind of get to be the staff activity professional now. So it's been really fun, but I'm still very close to activities. I still uh, work very closely with Natalie Davis and Active Times Consulting here in Dallas. Will you teach me about courses? Uh, and do seminars and things like that. So I work with her very closely. I also am the former president of the, acti the Activity Professional Association of Greater Dallas, um, APAGD. You can find us on Facebook as well. Uh, we haven't done it a lot since COVID, but we're hoping to bring some things back. Um, I have been on the Leading Age Texas SWAP peer group. I was a the chairperson of that for a while. So I have lots of different things that I've been doing, worked in all the different fields uh, as far as levels of care. Sorry, I can't tell. I'm actually a little nervous. This is on my feet. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So the reason that I wanted to talk to everybody and to share what is going on is I am currently working on my doctorate. What? So wait, wait, let's just pause for just a minute and let's take okay. this in, Haley, because here we have you, an amazing second generation activity professional, and you are in the midst of completing your doctorate. Yes. That is ginormous. I mean, I can't even say big because I want you to also share with everybody just a little bit about your journey with your doctorate before you get into what you're doing with your dissertation and yeah. getting everything finalized with that. And that's where everybody's going to be able to come in and help. But I think it's so cool to learn that anybody can do this. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean that I want, I want you to share what you've gone through in the last yeah. few years as you've worked your journey on your doctorate. Well, I've always known that I love higher education. I've always known that I wanted to, uh, I got my master's degree in 2012 in English of all things, um, but I love school. I've always wanted to get my doctorate. That's always been something that's kind of been on my dream board, but it really took my husband to kind of push me to say, you know what? Yeah, you can do this. There's, there's never really a right time to go back to school and I started looking at programs and came across this program at Dallas Baptist University in the fall of 2019. I'm reading through it. Oh, it's hard. It's three and a half years. It's lots of work. It's, it's going to be so much. But husband said, just call, just call and talk to them. So I called and talked to the director of the program for educational leadership. Now they're isn't a doctorate for activity professionals as far as I know, mm -hmm. but there are lots of things that we are really good at and leadership is one of them. I've actually done quite a few conferences on leadership um, and I love talking about using our leadership skills as activity professionals. It just gets me all fired up. <laughs> um, <laughs> so after me talking to the professor, I said, okay, you know what? 
I think this is the right thing. They built in flexibility for me. So going into this program, everybody else in my group is either ministers or teachers. I expected I was going to have to do something with teaching, but they were like, you know what? No, you're an activity professional. You focus on activities and senior care. I'm like, really? Yes, score. Because I was thinking, okay, this is going to be a couple of years, not really getting to dig deep into senior care world. But every paper I write is all about senior care. Every essay, every research paper is all about senior care, as is my dissertation. So decided to go ahead and apply for this program, applied in January of 2020. And then we all know what happened, right? <laughs> everything shut down, everything changed. So they completely had to figure out how are we going to do this program? Um, so I started my orientation, was a virtual Zoom meeting um, on in August of 2020. Like, okay, I'm going to do this. My daughter's getting older. She's seven now. My husband's got a good job. Let's see what happens. One week later, two little lines on a pregnancy test. <laughs> I know. Uh, so we, yeah, we were um, very happy about that. Um, so this is the first child that my husband and I have together. Um, so I have a 19 month old now who has gone with me the whole way. I have pictures of him as an infant sitting in my lap while I'm working on a computer. And then now that he's older, he'll sit there and try to get on the computer with me. And no, no, no. <laughs> But it's been really fun um, to go through this process for the last um, pretty much three years. I have completed all my coursework. Uh, my coursework has mostly been in leadership and um, education. How do we be excellent educators? And that's what I'm so passionate about as an activity director, educator. Education is so important to me, which is one of the reasons why I'm in this uh, degree program, as well as different elements of leadership. Because when you think about activity professionals, we may not have a big staff, but when you look at the things that a leader does, they listen, they motivate, they encourage, they inspire. Isn't that not what we do every single day as right, activity right. professionals? <laughs> uh, so there are so many crossovers between the leadership skills and the skills that activity professionals have to have to have a, a successful activity program. So it's been really wonderful to try to, to look how all of that ties all in together. And then it just happened that um, here at CC Young, some things changed and it was a universal unanimous decision that I should be moved over into this educational program. So I did two of the three things they said, don't do during your doctorate. They say, don't change jobs, don't move and don't have a baby. And I did two of those, <laughs> but at least I'm still here at CC Young. So, uh, and I absolutely adore CC Young. So it could have been a lot worse, but uh, so I changed over jobs. And so I've been able to apply a lot of those educational theories into teaching all staff. And so now I'm in a position where I am teaching all staff how to be an activity professional. So our CNAs who are coming new to our facility know what we expect of them from an activity fabulous. standpoint. Yeah, I think that's, so. Haley, I think that's fabulous. And I just want to reiterate, you know, that you did all of this with the two out of the three things that you said that they should you should not do so i want to point out to everybody that as as you're thinking about even going back and getting your associate's degree or your bachelor's degree you can do it you can work you can do it and haley is living proof that you can have your family you can have a marriage you can have a life and you can have a bit uh, an opportunity to go back and continue your education and i think that's the number one thing there because i hear that often from our activity professionals that well i don't think i can go back to school or i don't think i can go get you know that initial degree of the associate's degree do it do it for you because that's that's what's so important is doing it for you Haley. thank you for being a great role model to all of us that it is possible so yeah, let's get to your dissertation now. How exciting that you're working on that. <laughs> well, I have 122 pages written, so wow. it's going to be at least three times that at the end. But uh, one of the things that I found when I was doing a lot all my research was there are a lot of amazing activity professionals. There are a lot of amazing scholars in senior care, people that are writing papers and writing essays. 
there are not many who are both. We call them practitioner scholars, people that are doing the job that are writing the papers. Most of the research that I found on activity professionals specifically have all been from nurses. And they're finding these amazing things like one of my favorite papers that I read said, residents' favorite activities are, okay, I'm gonna blow your mind, the activities they like to do. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a formal research paper that's been published in an academic journal. What? We know this stuff. This is this is our every day. Of course, we know that their habits and routines are the thing and their favorite activities are the ones they're going to go do. We know <laughs> these things. And so I feel like in a little bit of a way, some of these nursing students are kind of stealing our thunder because don't we need to be the ones that are sharing information about our own professional so i actually wore my activity strong shirt today go yes. activity strong i love it yes. <laughs> uh, because we need to be the ones that are doing it we need to be the ones that are saying what should be happening in the world we have a voice and we need to let that voice be heard. I'm so excited about the things that NAP has been doing lately with reaching out and uh, advocating for activity professionals. And that's a little bit what I want to do with my dissertation. So the program, the type of dissertation that I'm doing is called a Delphi. I had no idea what that was before I started this program. So I learned that just a couple of years ago and thought that that would be a good fit for what I'm wanting to do. So in a Delphi study, the way it works is that the researcher, that's me, will identify a group of experts in a particular field. And those experts will make judgments on things that are not black and white. So if we're asking, you know, how many women are there in senior care? Well, that's, that's black and white. That's one fact, right? This is things that are on the edge, things that people might not agree about. So we gather this group of experts and we're trying to reach a consensus. What do we all agree on? And when we're doing it virtually through email system, I'll be using SurveyMonkey, you don't get that group speak. Because you know, if you're in a group of people, we've all seen this in all our activities, we're in a group of people and like resident council, the loudest person makes the decisions, right? So if we were doing this as a group in a room, we might have that problem. So we're doing it semi-anonymously. I'm the only one who's gonna know who the members of the committee are. That's not gonna be published information. But I'll be able to hear each person's voice and to be able to share that and to share what do we all agree upon. And it goes in rounds. So the first round, I send out information, ask for responses back, say, okay, of the 30 items that I'm asking about, we all agree on these, but we don't agree on these. Let me send these back to you and ask you what you think about it now, now that you've had a couple of weeks to think about it. We'll actually go through four different rounds. So it's four different surveys. I reached out and I did a pilot study uh, last month, a very successful pilot study. It took every person less than 15 minutes, average time of 8.25 minutes for taking these surveys. So they are quick but there are several of them because we want to reach consensus. So that's the element of my, that's the design of my research study is it's a Delphi. So there are some things that people have to meet, some expectations that people have to meet. So one of the things I have to do is define what is an expert? What does it mean to be an expert in activities? So I identify five different criteria and each person in the committee needs to meet at least two of them. The most common ones are gonna be five years experience in long-term care and education. We wanna say that you've had competent activity education. You know what you're doing. And if you've had those two things, that counts. Then I also have three other criteria that you could meet if you don't meet one of those, or you could meet all of them. One of them is an affiliation with a group, such as a member of NAP, MCAP, anything like that leading age, uh, affiliation with a group, who would recognize that, yes, you're an important part of this, you're a recognized person on our membership list, your local activity organization totally counts, Dallas Association totally counts. Another thing is a researcher or publisher in the field of activity. So I'm actually reaching out to some of these people who have been uh, practitioner scholars to see if they'll help me out. 
and then if you've been a surveyor in the long-term care process going into facilities, and I do have a couple of people like that, that I'm reaching out to who are both affiliated with activities and have been surveyors. So those are really important voices that we want to be heard. So what am I going to ask you? Now we're getting down to the meat of what do I need to find out? I'm going to take you back to 2003. Buechner and Fitzsimmons are two activity professional practitioner scholars, the people that are doing it, that are on the floor, that know what's going on, and are writing and publishing papers. So they did a study, and they looked at several hundred uh, residents in facilities. And when they identified what are the residents actually doing, they compared it to the calendar. Uh, it's titled, What You See Is Not What You Get. So they compared what's happening on the calendar to what's happening in person. And they found that 45% of the residents at those facilities had little to no activity involvement. Mm. Okay, that's bad. But then they dug a little deeper and they found that they wanted to look at what's really appropriate for each resident. Because we all know that every activity is not appropriate for every resident. So they said, okay, What's appropriate for this resident versus what are they offering? Do these things match? Does the calendar match the needs of the residents as far as mentally, physically, and psychosocially? They found that only 17% of residents received appropriate activities for their mental, physical, and psychosocial well-being two to three times a month. Mm. 17% of people two to three times a month. Everyone else was less. 6.5% received appropriate activities two to three times a week. So when you think about what do you want, what do you want to say when uh, your administrator, your executive director asks, what's the percentage of people that are participating in appropriate activities? Well, you want to say 100%, right? You want to say that everybody's participating in activities that are appropriate at least every day every week, only 6.5% were getting appropriate activities two to three times a week. That was in 2003. So that was about 20 years ago. Things have changed. Absolutely. The biggest thing that changed was the regulations. So when Buechner and Fitzsimmons were writing, CMS had one document. That was back when we were FTAG 240. 248. 248. Yeah, 248. Uh, so in 2017, CMS redid tons of the regulations. I mean, tons of regulations. Now we're FTAG 679. So 679 really changed. And now it's really focusing on person-centered care. Is the activity appropriate for the person? Which is what Buechner and Fitzsimmons were finding. Uh, what I did mention is in those studies, all of those facilities had zero activity tags. So it isn't like state knew this was going on. State had no idea. This is what they were finding. State found nothing. They said they were fine. So in 2017, the regulations changed. So now what? There are no minimum standards. There are no set expectations. It's all very vague at what they're looking for. They have this critical element pathway form that they're checking things off. And some of the things on there are kind of obscure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some of the things on there are very appropriate. But in my opinion, there's some things that are missing. But I can't tell you what those are because I want you to tell me what those are. <laughs> I can't sway your opinion. In 2022, the National uh, Academies of Science, Engineering, and Medicine did a similar study back to the one they did in the early 80s that brought about the OBRA program. They wanted to replicate what's happened. We did that in the early 80s and we found that everything was awful. Let's do it again in 22 and see what we're doing. They found, and I've, I've got it quoted here, that the state of healthcare is, in long-term care, is ineffective, inefficient, fragmented, and unsustainable. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> they, uh, they found that the surveys are not identifying when there's problems. They're coming in and they're evaluating and they're not finding things that should be significantly taken care of. Uh, 
They're not holding people accountable for correcting problems. They're not timely with their investigations. They're coming in so late that it's just, just compounded problems um, for all these facilities. And uh, the National Academies is blaming the government for poor oversight of the surveyors. They're saying that these tools that they're using are not sufficient. They're not working for getting down to the root of what is going on at facilities and how we can improve them. Hmm. That's where we come in. That's where you guys come in. So the National Academy of Science is saying, let's redo the regs. Woohoo! I'm all for redoing the regs. But we need to be the ones that are telling them what they need to be evaluating. So my question to you experts is, how important are the elements of the critical element pathway when we are evaluating a quality activity program? When a surveyor walks in, when a consultant walks into a facility and wants to see if your activity program is good for these residents, what do they need to be looking at? What do they need to be seeing? What do they need to be investigating? What questions do they need to be asking? So what I'm asking for you guys is to tell me a scale from one to seven of importance. How important is each element of the critical element pathway? The first one, for example, is how important is it that the activity calendar is communicated effectively? And you would score that on a score from one, meaning not important at all, to seven, very, very highly, extremely important. So you'd pick those for all those, but then I'm going to leave an open-ended spot for you to tell me what's missing. What are they not including? What are they not looking at that they need to be looking at? And I can't give you any suggestions or examples because that would hurt my research. <laughs> well, people, I'm going to tell you right now, people are already answering seven in the chat here. So yeah. Yeah. You're, you're getting that, you're getting that come in. I can say in the pilot study that did come back as a seven. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't think that's going to hurt anything, but yeah. uh, so in rounds one through three, we're going to identify which ones were important. If we all agree on the first go round, you won't ever see those again. If we don't agree, some people are rating it threes and fours. Some people are rating it sixes. That's too big of a gap. You'll see that question again on the second round. You'll also see all those things that everybody added will show up on the second round. And we'll do the exact same thing on the third round. Round four is a little different, and round four is actually a uh, suggestion from my amazing dean, Dr. Cavley. For round four, you're going to pick the top 10. What are the 10 most important things that you need to be looking at to evaluate whether you're having a successful activity program? Hmm. So I'll be able to take that. I'll be able to present that to all the people that are on the committee, everyone that finished all four surveys. We'll get a copy of that. It'll be in the published paper. It'll be available for people to use for consulting, for self-evaluation. And we can submit that to CMS and say, look, <laughs> here's what the activity professional said. When you're redoing FSTAC 679, this is what you need to be doing. We know we need to tell you. And we need to be the ones to tell them. So uh, another benefit of this is the first 25 people who complete all four surveys will get a $25 Amazon gift card. Yay! You can't go wrong with Amazon gift cards, right? Free money. <laughs> it's just as good as money, right? A gift card is, right? Absolutely. <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it. I so that's the thing. I go live on January 4th. I have to have a dedicated start date and stop date for the first round. And so I go live on January 4th. I'll be posting the link everywhere. And I need your help. I need you guys to uh, fill out the form for yourself. If you meet those expert criteria of at least two of those criteria, fill it out, send it to your friends, post it on your Facebook page. We need to spread the word so that as many people can share this information as possible. Um, and one of the things that happen is we get busy and there are people that are not gonna do rounds two, three, and four. So I wanna start with a big group that can help me uh, come to a big unanimous conclusion of what is important in evaluating an activity program in long-term care. Now I did have to limit it to long-term care. So this is specific to long-term care, but honestly y'all, the results of this study is gonna be applicable to all of it. We all know that. That's um, the concepts that we're looking at are also going to work for assisted living and independent living and day services and all those other things. 
So this one I do have to ask for specific to long term, but it's the the uh, the future of this is applicable to everyone. Haley, I think that's just amazing. And I, I'm seeing lots of hands raising and lots of likes and loves. So I think you're going to get a great response to that. I think everybody appreciates you waiting till January 4th as well to start the project and not tomorrow. <laughs> but that's why we wanted to give everybody kind of a month's notice as well to get this ball rolling and see what we can do. Because you are so right, Haley, about the fact that there's not a lot of activity based research that's been provided by activity professionals and here is our time to really shine with that and i know there's many of you out there that are great leaders in your communities that work in long-term care that have been around a long time like haley and myself and have have knowledge and skills that you're like gosh dang i wish i could do more how can i how can my voice make a difference and i think this is the opportunity for us to to have that happen and we appreciate Haley, you being the bus driver for us right now and driving us in the right direction to get us to where we need to go. And, you know, we're getting lots of great resource, uh, responses, people saying, thank you for doing this. This is exactly what the profession needs. We're getting lots of great comments like that. And yes, prefer, you know, and, and Lori Presser, thank you, Lori. She places out the, the Pelly forms and I'm sure you've you've looked at those and, and utilized that too. Awesome. Yes, I know, those your, are awesome. I know your research is focusing on the critical element pathways, which I think is very vital in what you're doing with with your research here. And so, OK, so I want to help. OK, so how can I do this? How can we help? What can we do? How do we get a hold of you? How do we get a part of the project? All right. So there's several different ways that you can do it. So after this, so post your email in the comment section below and I will add you to my list and I'll send it to you on January 4th. So post below. You can also reach out to the to me. Uh, my email is my easiest email is Haley teach at gmail.com. H-A-Y-L-E-Y teach T-E-A-C-H at gmail.com. So that's the easiest way to get a hold of me. That's the easiest email address um, with the only weird spelling is the two Y's. Uh, <laughs> You can uh, also um, reach out to me on Facebook, Facebook message me. I'm very active on Facebook, the Dallas Activity Professionals page. I'm, a, um, I'm one of the administrators on that. So you can message the APAGD. Um, however you can get a hold of me, I would love to talk to you more. If you have questions, I'd be happy to do that. Everyone that does do this has to fill out a form and just say, yes, I agree. So there's more information on that that I can send you. That form's already ready to go if you want to take a look at that. Um, there's, it's a lot of clinical sounding information. It's not fun, but it has Those to be. informed consents that you have to have. I know, informed I get that. Consents, yes. <laughs> well, we've already, you, you, you'll have to check back because there's already been about six or seven emails that have just come across the board. So people are excited. I also added yours in, in yes, case those who are you. watching later, you know, are, are capturing this. And this will be, this will be on our YouTube channel. So everybody can check it out there as well. And we'll add your email to the YouTube channel link so that everybody has access to that. If you get confused and you don't know which direction to go, you can certainly reach out to NAP because we are a firm uh, supporter of this project. And NAP has already posted a lot of that information on our website so that you have access to it as well. So you're like, I don't remember the email for Haley. I don't know how to get a hold of her. We will get you there. Mm -hmm. So we will help everybody get involved in that. This is amazing research and we are needing your help with that. Haley desperately needs your help. I don't think she's desperate, desperate, but she is desperate in needs of finding quality activity professionals which is where it comes from is the activity program. And so I hope each one of you will reach out to Haley and participate in the survey. Like she said at the beginning, it takes less than 15 minutes of your time with each uh, round of questions that come out. And what an exciting time to be a part of something so amazing like this and, and the research that we've all been wanting to do. And here we have somebody that, like I said, you're driving the bus. So thank you so much for doing that for us. We appreciate that Haley. And on um, January 4th, I will send you the link. I will post in, I will see if I can comment the NAP Facebook page wherever I can with the link. Um, so I'll have that information out that y'all can share and disseminate um, in we'll early January. To, we'll be happy to add all that information too to our January 2nd email that comes out. That Monday email of the new year, we can have it in there saying it's launching in a couple of days. This is fabulous, <laughs> fabulous. Haley, any final thoughts? 
Thank you guys so much. I really could not uh, do this program without the support from all the uh, activity directors in the Dallas area who have cheered me on through this whole thing. Um, so big shout out to Natalie, of course, for all her support um, from going way back when I was a little bitty baby in the activity world who's guided me through this. So thank you all so much. I um, I'm so excited to see what amazing things can come out of this research and then going forward from there. So I look forward to seeing you guys and emailing with you soon. Awesome. Well, thank you again, Haley, for your time today. Please check the chat box, come back and let us know if you're interested in participating in this amazing research. And we will see everybody here again the next time we provide a NAP News Now. We encourage you to stay safe and stay sane. All right. Take care of everybody. Bye. Bye. Have a great rest of your week.